Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. What I want to look at in today's video is a really significant technical paper that's just been released, and it shows very clearly the drag and lift of different fundamental car shapes. So the paper is called Experimental Data for the Validation of Numerical Methods, the Drive Air Model. What a complicated uh, title they've given. It sounds awfully boring, doesn't that? It? But it's not at all. It's been published in Fluids Journal. There's the web link if you want to go and look at it. It's a free release paper. And what's important is it shows the airflow behavior over the three different fundamental car body shapes. So why do I like this paper? Well, it's based on models in a wind tunnel, but the models are detailed and the wind tunnel and authors are highly reputable. This is stuff that you can really trust. The shapes are measured really well. They use pressure taps, lots of pressure taps, and they use particle image velocimetry, PIV in other words, for measuring real pressures and real air flows. The three shapes, square back, fast back, notch back, they match modern vehicle shapes really well. They're not an old fashioned model in their shape, Another thing I like about this is there's no CFD involved. People really get carried away with CFD, especially cheap and free CFD, I think, and lose fact, uh, lose the reality that it's just a model rather than fact. And in fact, this data is of such high quality in this paper, it's actually designed to validate CFD. What else do I like it? Well, the pressure and particle velocities are shown for the three different shapes, not only down the center line, but also each side of the center line. So you can see how a whole lot of this stuff is three dimensional, not the 2D that we often think about. And finally, I really like it. They've got these three basic shapes and they give you overall drag, CD. They give you overall coefficient of lift and they break that down into front and rear coefficients of lift. So you can take some general ideas and apply them to these different shapes. Now, here's the front part of the model. You can see it looks rather like a, a ute, uh, but on the back of that model, they put the different rear end geometries. And so, as I said, a square back, now sometimes we call that a wagon or an estate, a fast back with one curve all the way to the rear of the car, and a notch back, which sometimes we call a sedan or a saloon or something like that. It's a 25% scale model that they're using, but as you can see, it's quite detailed. Now, how do they do the measurements? Well. Depending on which geometry they were doing, they had 60 or 62 pressure tappings for each shape. They're measuring the pressures exerted by the airflow over those different models, and they'll show that to us in a minute via some colored diagrams. And the PIV, measuring the speed of the air, well, at the front, they just did one slice right at the stagnation point in the middle of the car, middle of the front. But at the back, as I say, they did multiple slices, not only on the center line, but also coming closer to the viewer and further away from the viewer. Now, we're not gonna look at all of that detail, all that detail's in the paper, but you can see it's really, really good data gathering that they're using. Okay, let's cut to the chase. What did they find out? Well, let's firstly look at drag values. CD, coefficient of drag. The square back model, 0.334. The fast back model, significantly lower in drag, 0.311. And the notch back, very close to the fast back, just a little bit more drag, 0.312. Now they're interesting straight away because they match largely what we already know and what we have already found out, but it's so fantastic to see it done with these almost identical models with just the rears changing all in the one wind tunnel, all with the one pressure measurement. And to be honest, I've never actually seen that done before with that degree of intellectual rigor. What about coefficient of lift? The square back overall has a negative coefficient of lift. It is developing downforce. That shape develops downforce overall in the wind tunnel. The fast back has got significant lift, 0.106, and the notch back has significant lift, but a little bit less than the fast back. Again, we can see the relativity of this data. How does that coefficient of lift break down into front and rear? Well, the square back at the front is developing downforce, but at the back is developing a little bit of lift. The fast back is developing a little bit of lift at the front and a lot more lift at the back. And the notch back is developing a little bit of lift at the front and again, a lot more lift at the back. And remember, it's rear lift which really governs car stability, much more so than front lift. 
So we can immediately, we've got a pecking order, if you like, for drag, for coefficient of lift. And if you want to break that down, you can see the difference in front and rear coefficients of lift. What about pressures? Now, I love measuring pressures on cars because it tells you so much. That's something you can easily do with very low cost gear. Just do it on the road. What did they find in the wind tunnel with these different models? Well, firstly, the hotter the color, the higher the pressure. And obviously, the colder the color, the lower the pressure. So the pressure over the square back changes very little across the roof. And that's what you'd expect. It's a, a, a slightly lower pressure, okay, all the way across the roof. And then there's that low pressure in the wake on the rear window. What about the fastback? Very, very different. Lower pressure as the air comes over the top of the car, over the roof, and then there's a gradual increase in pressure to the tail of the car. The wake is slightly higher in pressure than here on the square back. What about the notch back? Well, it's different. Look how there is a difference between them. And here we have the lower pressure over the roof and we have a greater pressure recovery on the notch back. That's why it has less lift than the fast back. We have a larger area of higher pressure. Remember, hotter color equals higher pressure. So we can see the differences in those rear lift coefficients reflected in the pressure distributions on these different body shapes. What about at the front? And let's look now at the speed of flow. Well, the square back, the fast back, and the notch back are almost identical at the front. Now, there must be some differences because we saw some differences in front lift. But if we look at speed of airflow uh, on the center line, you can see it's basically the same across all three different body shapes. And take note of just that small area of stagnation pressure. In one of my other videos, I point out that a lot of the airflow on modern cars, on the front of the cars, is actually flowing over or flowing under or flowing around. It's not brought to a halt and here on the center line we can see just how small the stagnation zone actually is but overall the three shapes are very similar but what about at the back okay hotter color equals faster flow colder color slower flow now let's start off by looking at these three here which are on the center line of the car on the center line and then here we're offset from the center line by 0.19 meters now, straight away at a glance, if we look there, look there, look there, look there, and so on, we can see that the airflow speeds on the center line in the wake and over the car are quite different to the airflow speeds as you go away from the center line. The wake and the airflow over the back of the car is three-dimensional, even though it's often convenient and easy to look at it as a two-dimensional flow, this shows very clearly how it's actually 3D. So let's look firstly just on the center line. On the square back, we can see separation occurs at that trailing edge of the roof. And we have a large area of slow moving air, the wake in other words, behind the car. Look how far it extends backwards behind the car. There's drag for you. What about the fast back? Well, we can see along the center line, the area of wake is much, much smaller, isn't it? You can see there it's smaller. And we can also see there's a slight slower bit up the center line, up the rear glass. There's a slight separation occurring down the middle of the fast back glass. Now, does it reattach? It gets very close to reattaching, doesn't it, on that trailing edge? What about the notch back? We can see there's a bigger separation bubble here on the notch back. And if you wool tuft not notch back cars, modern notch back cars, you'll almost always see a separation bubble down the bottom of the rear window in the middle of the car. And that's what I really like about these diagrams. They match what you can find out on the road and they match extremely well. You can see that the notch back wake directly behind it here in the center line is not dissimilar to the fast back wake when we do a comparison. Now, what about when we're off the center line? Well, look at the dramatic difference in the square back. It's much higher speed flow behind the car down near the edges of the car. And again, that makes sense. We would expect that to be occurring, but so nice to actually see it demonstrated. Here, we've got, again, far less high speed flow when we're away from the center line behind the car. And we can also see that there's actually attached flow down the sides of the rear window of the fastback, even though here we could see a little bit of separation in the middle. 
Go to the notch back, and again, we can see a very, very similar thing occurring. The differences here between the notch back and the fast back aren't anywhere near as great as compared with the square back. And that's because, of course, notch backs these days have such a laid back rear glass. They're not dissimilar in many ways to fast backs, but they're dissimilar enough to see the different pressure distribution we saw a minute ago and see those different drag and lift values. So what can we learn? And if you want to see a lot more detail that I'm showing here, go to the paper. Well, in terms of highest to lowest drag, looking at these fundamental body shapes, the order is square back, notch back, fast back. Now, some of those are a bit close together, so they're not separated by the same distances, but that is the order. From highest to lowest overall lift, the fast back has got the highest lift, notch back next, and then square back with least lift. Highest to lowest front lift, the notch back has got the highest front lift, then we have the fast back, and then we have the square back. And highest to lowest rear lift, which is probably the most important of the lift values uh, of all of them, fast back's got the highest rear, li rear lift, notch back's next highest, and then square back is lowest in terms of rear lift. Can we get anything else from it? Well, as I said, weight patterns are three-dimensionally complex, and you can really see it when we take those slices of, of airflow speed away from the center line. And so center line pressure tappings are unlikely to yield the full story. Does that mean we shouldn't use center line pressure tappings? Well, of course we should. Not many of us are gonna have the time or resources to do 60 or 70 pressure readings on the back of a car, but doing a center line pressure tapping and maybe just one offset from the center line by maybe a third of the width of the the car will still tell you a great deal of the story. If you want to learn more about any of this stuff, modifying the aerodynamics of your road car, it's quite a large book and it covers all these areas in detail. And if you want a smaller and therefore cheaper book, Car Aerodynamic Testing for Road and Track, I show you in that book how you can directly measure the sort of pressures that we've seen in this video. And don't forget, the link to the full paper is in the description of this video, so you can just click on it and go and look at it for yourself. An excellent paper. Thank you.